Hello, so today I'm going to show you how to do um, a tissue crochet tissue pouch. I'm going to do a, a beginner series on ways to keep your purse organized and this is one of the items that I want to show you how to create. So in order to make your tissue crochet, your crochet tissue pouch, you're going to need some yarn, a pair of scissors, a crochet hook, which I use a six millimeter, and you also need a sewing needle, a yarn needle. I believe this was a red heart yarn and if I find it I'll link it in the video somewhere but it's one of those cheaper yarns that you can get from like a Walmart. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a slip knot and to do a slip knot I will link in the video how to do it but I'm going to show you how to do it here. You're going to grab the tail end of your yarn and place it in your hand. You'll wrap it around your pointer finger two times. You'll have a bottom loop and a top loop. You'll place the bottom loop over the top loop, creating an X, and then stick that bottom loop underneath the top loop and pull. So it's a lot easier to see than it is for me to say it. And like I said, I will link it in the video on how to do a slip knot if you didn't catch it there. So go ahead and place the slip knot on your crochet hook. And like I said, I use a six millimeter for this project. And you're going to create your foundation chain. To do a foundation chain, you're just going to yarn over, placing the yarn behind the crochet, crochet hook and then pulling through. So we'll do it again, yarn over and then pull through yarn over and then pulling through and you'll do a foundation chain of 17 and this could vary this could vary because I did this based off of the size of my tissue packet so um, dollar store tissue packets are a little different than like Kleenex tissue packets so it just it's gonna vary just a little bit so I did 17 once you did your foundation chain, you're going to do a single crochet stitch into the first stitch from the crochet hook. So insert your crochet hook through that foundation chain, yarn over, and then pull through the two loops that are on your crochet hook. And I'm going to show you again. So insert your crochet hook, and I'm just showing you there, into the next available stitch in the foundation chain. Okay, you're going to pull up a loop. You'll have two on your two loops on your crochet hook. You'll yarn over and then you'll pull through. I'll show you again. Okay. And I'm going to show you that a few times because really that is all we're going to do for this entire project is the foundation chain and then a single crochet stitch. Okay, so you're going to insert your crochet hook, and I'll show it here. You slower here, yarn over, pull through. You'll have two loops on your crochet hook. You'll yarn over again, and then you'll pull through those two, leaving one loop on your crochet hook. And that's what it should start looking like. The hardest part, because with a beginner, is if you make your foundation chain too tight. So when you're making your initial foundation chain, you want to be really loose. Don't hold your yarn too tight. And um, yeah, that's going to be the most trickiest part. But other than that, this is a complete beginner's project that anyone can do. A tip is to use a larger crochet hook when you're making your foundation chain. That makes it easier to work back through. So you're just going to continue doing a single crochet stitch all the way down the foundation chain. When you get to the end, I'll show you here. You're going to um, go ahead and complete your single crochet stitch until you get to the very last stitch. Okay. There you have it. Okay, and once you complete this stitch, you're going to do a chain one. So doing a chain one is just yarning over and then pulling through. That is a chain one. You'll do a chain one and then you'll turn your work. Turning your work is just flipping it around. You're going to then do a single crochet stitch in every single hole down the foundation chain. So um, don't overcomplicate it. You'll see that the, the biggest hole that you see is going to be where we're going to put the crochet hook. This is where you want to start counting. So we just did our first stitch, 
Now we're doing our second stitch and then you'll do your third stitch and you'll just wanna keep that count going all the way down the row. You should have 16 single crochet stitches. Now, if you have 17, that's fine. If you have 15, that's fine. Just remember that the next row and all of the subsequent rows after this first row will need to have the same number of stitches. So if you had 17, keep 17. If you had 15, keep 15. What you don't want to happen is you're going from 16 to 15 to whatever because then your work will start to shift, it will start to shrink, or it may start to grow, okay? So that's gonna be really important for my beginners is just to count the stitches as you go down the row and make sure you have consistency. Okay? That's what it should be looking like. I love this little tissue pouch. Just makes my purse so much more neater. So here it is. This is a halfway point. Um, this is what it should start looking like, and it should start shaping up, and it should be a good um, kind of like a rectangle is what we're going for. Okay. Now I don't remember exactly how many rows I did. I think I did 22 rows. However, the main thing is you want it to wrap around your tissue. So in my case, I think this was about six inches. It was big enough for it to wrap around the Kleenex tissue. But if you use a dollar store tissue, which is fine too, you just wanna make sure that the crochet fabric wraps around, okay? Here I am, I'm just gonna finish off the work. So I finished up to the size I wanted. I'm gonna do my final crochet, single crochet stitch into that last chain. And as you can see here, the, the, the sides are pretty even and that's exactly what you want. It's bending a little bit, but that's okay because we're working with acrylic yarn and I have a tighter stitch. So to finish off, you're going to yarn over and you're gonna pull that tail all the way through. Now, I do not know why I left such a large tail. You do not need a tail this large. I think at one point I was gonna try to sew it with that tail, but that ain't, that ain't how you do this. So um, you don't need that large of a tail. Just cut it off and then um, pull it through, okay? So here I am, I'm just showing you how I um, put the tissue into the center of the crocheted swatch, the crochet fabric, to make sure that I got everything lined up the way I wanted it to look, okay? So you're gonna run a stitch along the bottom and the top, if that makes sense. So you're gonna put your tissue in there if you have a plastic, whatever you're using as your guide. And you're going to sew along the left side and along the right side. That's how you're going to close up your pouch, okay? So I'll show you how to do that. I'm just getting a little bit closer so you can see what I'm talking about. So you're gonna sew along that side and you're going to also sew along the right side depending on what, what, you're, what side you're looking at. Okay. So you can, once you fold it over, you can secure it any way you want. I use the little binder clip is what I had in the office which is where I'm working but if you have a needle you can stick a needle in there. If you have um, chip clip, a clothes pin, whatever you want to use. I'm just using that so that way I'm able to sew the ends together and it's not all flailing around. So whatever you have, don't go out to the store and try to buy anything if you don't want to. Just get something to kind of keep the end together, okay? So here I am, I'm just sewing up the pouch and all I'm doing is I'm just lining up the stitches. The trick here is because I'm using the same yarn that I used to create this project, it's very forgiving. So even if you're not the best sewer, like me, you'll still be able to create this pouch and no one will know that you have any kind of imperfections because the yarn matches up. Everything's in your favor. You are winning. <laughs> okay, so just go ahead and sew up the whole side of that pouch. And what I did, um, I feel like I'm so wordy, what I did was I sewed all the way to the end and then I brought the yarn back to the middle. So I sewed up and then I sewed back down to the middle. And that's just what I did. So, and I'll show you why in a second. 
Okay, so as you can see here, like I said, I sewed down the left and the right side and then I brought the yarn back to the middle because I didn't like how wide the mouth or the opening of this tissue pouch was. I wanted to close it up a little bit more. Because I brought the yarn to the middle, I don't have to get any additional yarn to sew. I'm just gonna use that little tail piece there on the right and the little tail piece that I have on the left and I'm gonna just sew up about an inch on each side so that my tissue is more secure inside the pouch. So I'll show you here what I'm talking about. And I'm sorry I'm off camera just a little bit. It, I'm gonna shift it down, there you go. So you see there, I'm just sewing up the, um, just the corners, just a little bit, so that the yarn, I feel like the, uh, the tissue stays more secure because the last thing you want in your purse, especially if you're trying to organize it, is tissue falling out. That kind of defeats the whole purpose, right? Okay, and I just did that, I guess that's about an inch, three-fourths of an inch. On both sides you want to go too far up because you need to be able to put your tissue pouch your tissue pouches in the um, the tissue pouch inside the tissue pouch <laughs> make sense I mean and that's pretty much it I just secured it I tied a knot and then I just cut off all those little tails that I didn't need and that was this is the first project in my little three-part series I'm gonna do a uh, makeup like a little makeup brush bag and then a zipper pouch so I'll do all of those and I'll kind of they'll be with the same yarn and all that so there you have it just cut off the ends the ends all those little tails I sewed on a little flower which I'll show you in a video I mean and that's pretty much it Thank you so much for watching and please be sure to ask me any questions in the comment section down below. If you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. I try to put out videos um, weekly. And if you haven't already done so, please check out my last couple of videos and follow me on my other social media platforms if you want to. Alright guys, see you next time. Bye!